What's up guys, this is Merc Music, and today I'm going to show you guys how you can quickly and easily get shiny pals in Pal World. Now right off of the bat, what is a shiny or rare or lucky pal? Well, this is an example of one right here. This is a pangullet that I caught yesterday. Wait, we have a raid happening. Psst. But basically the shiny or lucky or rare pals, whatever you want to refer to them as, they are going to be larger versions of typical pals in the game. And unlike Pokemon games where the shinies are really just different colored versions of Pokemon, in Pal World, the shiny pals are going to be guaranteed to have some better passive skills. In the case of Piplup over here, we have the Lucky Roll, which gives him plus 15% work speed and attack, which is really useful because he's either going to be more useful in battle or also at the base doing some work. So far on my main save where I'm playing solo, I have a total of three shiny pals so far. I also have Kremis over here who is working on the base and has the passive skill Lucky, which is really useful, as well as Artisan, which is actually a 50% buff to work speed, which is very nice. And then I also have a shiny Cativa over here, which also has the lucky roll. Now, depending on the pal, if you find the shiny version of it, it could have some different benefits, some different traits. It's going to vary from pal to pal. But specifically what I want to do with this video is show you guys how you can find them more often and also give you guys some really helpful tips and tricks on how to catch them. But before we dive into that, we actually need to return to the title screen. We need to exit the world and I need to go over some settings that will really help you guys. So right off the bat, here are some of my graphic settings. Now, this is not nearly as important as some of the things I'm going to show you guys very soon, but I did want to give you guys this as a reference because sometimes your graphic settings can actually have a pretty big impact on shiny hunting. If you've done shiny hunting in Pokemon games, then you know this is definitely the case because sometimes it can be really hard to find shiny Pokemon. But thankfully, shiny pals and, you know, trying to shiny hunt in this game is not going to be as difficult. It's not going to be as visually demanding, and we'll get into that in a sec. But at the bare minimum, I would recommend turning off motion blur, putting your view distance on epic, and also consider maxing your field of view. This will just make it easier to be able to see the entire world around you, which which in turn also means that it's going to be easier to find shiny pals. As far as it goes for sound settings, you could tweak some of these things, specifically the voice of the pals and the ambient sounds, because this is going to be a massive indicator on how to find the shiny pals. But just know that it's not completely necessary. And these are my default sound settings that I'm playing with right now. But if you really wanted to tweak this in favor of shiny hunting, you could basically lower everything except for the ambient and voice of the pals, because I'm pretty sure that's all the information you're going to need when it comes to shiny hunting specifically and trying to get more of those lucky pals. Now, if we go to start game, this is where you can actually really make things significantly better for yourself. If I click on the world, I can actually change the world settings. And this is what actually makes Pal World just a lot of fun. Even if your world was at a certain difficulty or if you had certain settings, you can always change this later. And I'm going to show you guys some of the settings that I put on. Now, do bear in mind that if you're trying to do like just a regular playthrough of the game, you might want to consider making a separate save in a separate world just for shiny hunting if you want to try to keep your worlds essentially intact, like you don't want to change it or de deviate from the base experience too much. Me personally, I'm playing this game with other groups of people. So honestly, on my main save, I'm a little behind where I think I should be. But either way, let's just dive into the settings. And I think this goes without saying, but if you want to experience the game at its base level, you can obviously do that. But I'm trying to make a video on how to get more of the lucky or shiny pals faster and more easily. So for the sake of this video, I'm going to show you guys how you can try to maximize that to the best of your ability. I'm just trying to help you guys. I'm not telling you how to play the game. You can take this advice if you want to, or you can leave it. But yeah, right off the bat, you might want to consider increasing the cap capture rate of the pals. This basically will make it easier to catch the lucky or shiny pals when you see them in the world. And in some cases, if you have a high enough catch rate or if the pal is not a very high level, you should just be able to go up to it and throw a pal sphere at it and catch it no problem. But you want to be very careful. You don't want to send out a pal on your team, like in your party that has really powerful attacks or is too strong or like too high of a level. You don't want to ever accidentally knock them out because if you kill the shiny pal, you can't catch them and they'll be lost forever. So try not to focus on doing too much damage to them. What I would recommend instead is trying to look for the lift monk effigies. Regardless of changing the default pal capture rate in your world settings, you can hunt after these in your world, in your save. And as you collect more effigies, you'll just increase your capture rate by default. And in general, this will just make it easier for you to catch pals, but this will especially help when you're going after the shiny ones. Now, another setting that you can tweak, although this is going to affect your game's performance, so be careful with this setting because it will also potentially scale the difficulty way up, is this setting right here that says PAL appearance rate. It says that it also affects the game's performance. Now, by default, it's set to one. But if you set this to three, it will triple the amount of spawns in your game. And honestly, it makes the game feel more alive and full. I haven't seen any significant game performance, D 
decreases. But at the same time, I do have a decent PC that can easily run this game. And I do want to add a caveat here that just because you have the pal appearance rate to three times doesn't mean it's going to spawn three times as many luckies or three times as many shinies. I don't believe that it's going to increase your odds, but it does increase the overall amount of spawns, which could potentially increase the likelihood of getting the shiny or lucky pals. These two are the main two settings that you could tweak. And there are some other ones you can change as well, but I'm going to be honest, it is kind of cheesing the game a little bit, but it will absolutely 100% help your experience when it comes to shiny hunting. And I would consider it if that's your main focus when playing this game. One thing you could also do is reduce the damage to player multiplier. Basically what this would mean is that you're not going to take as much damage from the pals in the game. You could also reduce the amount of stamina that you lose and also the hunger. So that way you can just stay out and you can keep grinding. You can keep hunting without having to worry about any kinds of limitations at all. Same thing goes for the pal stamina reduction rate as well as their hunger depletion and even their damage. You could change all of these modifiers if you want to, but it will just make the game a walk in the park. But for the sake of this video, we're going to leave this on default. I'm not going to tweak or change these settings. And for the sake of this video, just know that we're basically playing on normal difficulty with a higher catch rate and a higher appearance rate for the pals. With that being said, we can go ahead and cancel out of this and we can just go ahead and load up the world because again, those are just suggestions for world settings that I'm giving you. You don't have to take those pieces of advice, but I do want to give you guys some in-game pieces of advice that all of us can benefit from. Just give me a sec. For some reason, my character looks kind of weird here. What the? takes a little bit to load. There we go. That's my beautiful character. All right. So let's start going over some really helpful tips. Oop, this egg is actually ready. You know, one thing I haven't seen yet in the game is whether or not you can get a lucky pal from the eggs. I haven't had it happen yet, but I'd love to see that happen. I feel like that would be even more rare than trying to shiny hunt one. So the first thing I want to go over is strategy. And a big part of this is actually just starting off and playing the game. I would recommend finishing basically all of the tutorial. I haven't fought the boss yet. You don't need to do that. But what I would recommend right off the bat is building up your first base and trying to finish as much of that as possible. That way you can have an efficient team of pals over here. They're making free wood. They're making free rocks or stone rather, sorry. <laughs> it's also really worth investing in a ranch so that way they can farm and get their own food as well as the berry plantations. No matter what you're doing in your world, you should start off with the basic fundamentals and get your first base complete. This is gonna make things way easier right off the bat. And like I mentioned earlier, when you have the statue of power, you can also enhance your capture rate. As you can see right here, mine's only at a base capture power of three, so it's not super high, but I do wanna share a really helpful tip with you guys that will help you get more of these and be able to find them faster. But before we dive into that, I also wanna show you guys some stuff that you should have ready when it comes to shiny hunting. You're definitely going to want to make sure that you can ride on one of your pals. It could be Rush Ore. It could be Aether Deer. I recently just built the saddle for Nightwing, so we can actually fly around now, which I haven't done too much in the game. But the reason why this is so helpful is because you will be able to get around the map faster. You don't have to worry about your stamina depleting nearly as quickly, and it just makes going after the shiny or lucky pals so much easier. But real quick, before we get back on John Deere the second over here, I do want to show you guys a helpful movement technique that will also make it easier to shiny Shiny hunt. Pretty much everyone starts out in the game in this section right here. And what's really nice is that it's a downhill slope. You can slide and quickly get from point A to point B. And when you have this many pals spawning, who knows when you're going to find a shiny one. This makes it really easy to navigate and you're going to want to make sure that you're doing this because you can just do a quick sweep all the way down to the very bottom of the hill. So even if this isn't your first instinct, like maybe you want to go somewhere else or do something different, it's always good to do a quick check, a quick scan of this first hill because you can get down it very quickly and then you can just go over here to fast travel and then go somewhere else if you want to. So I'd highly recommend doing that first. From here, I'm gonna fast travel to the small settlement and we'll just kind of go from there. And we're gonna ride our Aether Deer around and we're gonna try to see if we can find anything. Now, the big tip that I have is actually to shiny hunt at night. I can't really give an example of that at the moment because obviously we're playing during the day, which again, in the settings, if you want to, you could decrease the amount of daytime in your game and you could increase the amount of nighttime. And the reason why I recommend this is because when you see the shiny pals or the lucky pals, whatever you want to call them, they will have a glaringly obvious glow around them. It's very obvious when you find a shiny in this game. Not only are the pals going to be like double or triple in size, but they have that glowing aura and it's much easier to spot at night. Shiny, shiny, let's go. This is why you hunt at night. This is why you hunt at night. Oh, let's go. Now I lost my last shiny, so I'm not going to risk this. Let's just see what the catch is going to be like immediately. 50%. That's not too bad. Yes, yes, my first rare pal, let's go. Oh, yes. Psh, 
There's also a really obvious audio cue that plays when there's a shiny pal in the nearby area. But this is really where having a certain ride Pokemon like Nightwing can be very helpful. If you can fly around, you know, get on top of your pal and just fly around the map, it's going to be much easier to spot the pals that you're looking for. And obviously a big part of getting the shiny that you want is knowing where they spawn. So for example, if you really want to get a shiny Pengullet, you need to be trying to patrol areas where you know it spawns. Same thing with Rush Ore. There's a bunch of Rush Ores over here, but there's not a single lucky or shiny one. So we're just going to move away from this area. Now, what's really nice about this advice that I'm giving you guys is that you can also use this to go after Lift Monk effigies, which again will increase your capture rate. I would recommend riding on your palace to be able to do that more quickly and efficiently and also playing the game at night because it's really easy to spot them versus the daytime. As you can tell, Nightwing is getting hungry. And again, that's why it can be good to reduce their hunger, maybe pull back on the stamina depletion rate as well. But again, it's up to you. You can choose whatever settings that you enjoy playing on. What I'm really waiting for at this point is for it to just turn to nighttime because it's going to be so much easier to look at everything on the map. It's not even completely dark, but you can see effigies spread out throughout the entire map. This is very helpful. And look, we got one right here. This is exactly why we're doing this. And you can see a bunch of them spread throughout the entire map. But again, for the sake of this video, we are trying to shiny hunt. We can always look for effigies later. And you'll also want to keep in mind that the spawns can change when it's cycling between day and night. You'll definitely want to keep that in mind because you don't want the shiny or lucky pal to despawn. I unfortunately had this happen with the first ever shiny that I saw. It was a Pengullet and I was so excited and I wanted to catch it so badly. But unfortunately, I wasn't progressed that far into the game. I wasn't equipped for it. It had a very powerful attack and it just straight up killed me. Thank Thankfully, I was able to encounter another shiny Pengullet and capture it, but that's exactly why you want to be prepared and ready for these types of pals. They can be very strong, they can do a lot of damage, and you need to be prepared for that. Okay, honestly, you might want to turn off raids too. I've had two raids happen already, and that is so stupid. You're waking up all my pals, you jackasses! Knock it off. Hey, we got some free pal spheres though, not bad. They died pretty quickly. All right, sorry about that, guys. Go back to sleep. <laughs> but yeah, now it's time to shiny hunt. Let's go. Okay, still nothing yet over here. It's even easier to find chests as well, too. I mean, look at that. Okay. Oh, that's the Chillette boss. Okay. Have I fought that? I have. Okay. It just respawned. Also, if you increase the pal appearance rate, if you're playing co-op with some buddies and stuff, that's a really good way to ensure that more than one person can capture the boss. That way, no one's really missing out, you know? But again, just keep in mind that it does boil down to RNG. It does boil down to luck. These are lucky pals we're talking about. They're still going to be rare. They're still going to be hard to find and also hard to capture. But if you do see one and you do find one, it's going to be an amazing addition to your party and you're definitely going to want to capture them. <laughs> I know it might be a little late to mention this, but definitely make sure that you have enough pal spheres and even mega or giga spheres. I don't have the giga ones yet. That's essentially the ultra ball of the game, but that will definitely help with the capture rate and make it easier to catch them. Okay, so our first night was not successful, but we are just going to fast travel back home. Yeah, I haven't been to this area, but this is really cool. It's got some of the same starting pals as the beginning island. Oh, we don't have ruby. That's new. Let's go ahead and get one of these. It's not a great capture rate, but maybe we can just get it without having to attack at all. Yep. Yep. And that's why it's good to increase your capture rate either through the game's settings or also collecting the Lift Monk effigies, which we just got another one right there. Oh, and there you go. We have another shiny, guys. Now, this is going to be a dupe, but I mean, a shiny is a shiny. We have another shiny Cativa, and you know we got to catch it. So I'm going to show you guys that process. Right off the bat, I'm going to try to do the easy method. We're just going to switch to a Mega Sphere. We're going to get behind it. A little stealthily and boom and that should be good enough to just catch it right off the bat if it's not okay we're gonna have to poke you a little bit i don't want to send out a pal to attack because they might do too much damage now one thing that is difficult about you know higher encounter rates is there there's gonna be a bunch of them trying to smack me oh but this is bad oh my god just try to catch it just try to catch it all of you get caught all of you panic mode this is bad. See, this is one of those situations where things could go very badly. We got to be very careful. I need to kill the smaller ones first. Because even though he's level 6 and we're like level 28, even though it's a shiny pal, we could probably one hit him. And we don't want to do that. All right. He's just blocking the pal spheres. That's not great. We need to try to catch the small ones. Just to get them off of our back for a sec. There we go. Okay. That attack is not good. Let's try to catch you. He blocked it. Man, these cats are annoying, dude. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, we need to kill this one. There you go. That one's done. The level 2 is like hanging too close to him. At least we have our shield back. Oh, okay. That's way too far. Okay. 
He forgot he's mad. That could work out. I don't want to lose this one. We're going to go back to the method of switching to the Mega Sphere. I do need to run if this goes badly again. But look, he's in La La Land right now. He doesn't care. But the second you attack, he will care. So let's try that again. Okay, we have a much better catch right now. Come on. No, he's out again. Okay. Run. Or at least let's get the other one. Let's get this other one out of here. There you go. The other cat's dead. John Deere's getting hungry now. Let's just run away. I don't want to accidentally kill it. That's what I'm worried about. All right, so it's just the shiny by himself right now. Good. All right, he's once again wandering off. Come on. This is a pretty high catch rate. I'm surprised it's not getting him, but... Oh! All right. We got him, boys. We did it. We got another shiny Kativa. This one has Lucky and Runner, which will be pretty interesting. And... My guy's just infinitely poking for some reason. But there you go. We are 45 minutes into recording and we got another shiny pal. Now, granted, this one was surprisingly difficult. <laughs> I don't know why that one was giving me as much hassle as they normally do, but it's all good. That's kind of the big reason I wanted to make this video. I just want to make sure that everyone is prepared for when they encounter a shiny pal like that. So that way they will have an easy time catching it. So that way they don't potentially die or have the shiny pal run away from them. Or in this case, also run out of items because you really do need to make sure you have enough pal spheres. No matter what kind of rarity it is, you want to make sure that you have enough so that way you can catch it with no problem but yeah for the time being we're just gonna travel back home and we can check out our pal box right here we can look at our new shiny i'm pretty sure it has different passive skills compared to our other one this one has lucky which is good but it also has runner which is a 20 percent increase to movement speed now i'm not sure if that's just for the pal or if that's also for us as a player i've seen this as a benefit before but i'm not sure if that's what it does but yeah man that's definitely pretty sick we have a total of four shinies on this save and i'm definitely gonna keep trying to shiny hunt and get as many as possible but yeah guys that's how you can get shiny or lucky pals in pal worlds more quickly and more efficiently thank you guys very much for watching i really do hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you're going to try to hunt after the shiny or lucky pals in this game i really do wish you guys the best of luck much like shiny hunting in pokemon this is one of the more unique aspects of the game and it does add a lot of replay value and fun and i'm curious to know if you guys are playing pal worlds have you caught any shiny pals yet and if you have what was the first one that you caught definitely let me know in the comments below and with that being said i really do hope you guys enjoyed this video if you guys did and you want to see some more pal world stuff make sure to drop a like i'll see you guys later Come, <laughs>